Chairman, Commissioner, Secretary Vonk, uh, uh, here today to update you a little bit about uh, our fishery crew's favorite time of year. Uh, we get to get out of the office, stop writing reports, and actually start doing something. And uh, as we're reminded a lot of times, uh, managing's about doing. And uh, I'm going to show you some activities that we've been up to uh, of our spawning and stocking. And it's a very important management tool uh, for us, uh, one, of, uh, one of a few options that we have to manage fisheries. And uh, some, you know, simple question, well, why do we stock fish? And one of them is to supplement existing populations that might not necessarily produce enough fish on their own. Uh, we talk about uh, recruitment and whether it's from spawn, uh, actual reproduction or a bottleneck for some other reason, fish aren't provided to the anglers. So we can supplement those populations with some stockings. And of course, it's fewer nowadays, but uh, there's always newer waters created. Uh, take the opportunity to establish fish populations. And we have a chance to try new species once in a while. And I think some of you have heard about uh, our proposal for Atlantic salmon that we're exploring and have asked some questions about of the public. Uh, that would be an example. One of the huge uses of, your, of stocked fish uh, as a management tool is our urban fisheries. Uh, I know you've heard updates in the past about uh, uh, Family Park Pond in Sioux Falls, and we manage that largely by not only stockings of catchable trout, but from trap and transfer uh, operations where our crews go out, actually <coughs> trap fish, adults stock them into those waters, and uh, we have an instant fishery, very popular. Uh, the usage on some of those fisheries is just incredible. Another thing that we're involved with, but is mostly a federal hatchery uh, responsibility is the stocking of threatened and endangered species. Uh, for example, the pallid sturgeon uh, down below uh, Gavin's Point Dam. And then also we work uh, with some paddlefish stocking on, uh, on Lake Francis Case and to provide a fishery that we've recently established there for the a new stagging season, and then also we're exploring stocking some paddlefish into Lake Sharp to try over several years to establish another population that we can have a recreational fishery. And forgive me, and then another thing that we use stocked fish for is to reestablish populations when we have winter kill or summer kill. And we've had a few of those this spring, especially in the southeast corner of the state, and we'll take opportunity to adjust our stocking schedule to take advantage of uh, you know, some of those new populations that really will explode and maybe provide a short-term fishery in those waters that aren't maybe as, uh, maybe as high quality as some of our others. Uh, as I mentioned, fish stocking is another one of the tools that we use along with regulations and habitat improvements. Uh, just as note, that's uh, Leslie Murphy uh, with a largemouth bass from Minnesota, but she's one of our habitat and access senior biologists. Uh, how do we make decisions where we stock fish? Uh, it's really a meeting of three circles, uh, the fish population characteristics, the habitat available in a certain body of water, whether it's you know, depth and size or watershed characteristics. And then a large component is people. Uh, the location of the water uh, by population centers, of course, becomes a higher priority. Uh, population, and uh, then we take into account our angler surveys and the preferences of uh, our anglers. Some of the products we produce for stocking, uh, in the top corner is an eyed walleye egg, and uh, you can see the little black and yellow dot there, the eye of the fry in the egg. We stock, the largest number of fish we stock in the state is walleye fry, and you can see that under the microscope. And it's difficult to see, but the tip of that pencil represents a walleye fry, and right above it 
you can barely, barely see a dot. That's how big a walleye fry is. And we have many waters that we can stock just those tiny, tiny fish into to maintain a population. Uh, very efficient use of our dollars. Below that, for a walleye, and it, this corresponds to sizes for bass or perch also, is what we call a small fingerling. It's about as long as a dime is in di across, and a large fingerling for walleye. And then uh, just a photo of uh, how we can mid-water stock some fry, hauling them out in the boat and siphon them out. Sometimes that gets them out away from predation, uh, especially in the spring, so they can, uh, uh, you know, survive. This is just, uh, I'm not going to read those, but those are some numbers of our requests for this year for walleyes and perch. Of note is, is that we were able to collect 147 million walleye eggs this year, uh, all from northeastern lakes, and our goal was 114 million, so that puts us in a very good position to, uh, to be flexible. We collect fish for spawning uh, by setting trap nets generally. Uh, example, the float line coming out there is the lead, which goes out to a set of hoops and a frames, which we run by from the boat and actually net the fish out. And we collect the fish to take in and spawn that way. There's just an example uh, slide of some of the other fish species from hatcheries and some of the numbers that we'll be stocking from a request in 2014. And those requests are developed uh, by requests from our hatch or from our fisheries managers, and then we have meetings and discussions with the hatcheries and our research biologists to adjust and have an appropriate stocking number. Uh, just an example of how we squeeze a walleye and obtain eggs. We'll fertilize them with milk from the male, and it's something that uh, that people are really interested in and, uh, and like to see the process. And this was an opportunity when we were spawning on a boat dock where some people could actually see it. The other tool we use is trap and transfer where we catch fish from wild populations and transfer them to lakes where populations are lacking or these urban fisheries. Just some examples of the numbers that we use. And off to the side you'll notice it says natural rearing ponds. Those are some ponds that we'll stock walleye fry in in the spring and then go in in the fall and harvest them. And those fish can be from 6 to 14 inches and are very, not 14, 6 to 10 inches and are, uh, work very well in some of our lakes that are of limited uh, reproduction quality. We also stock cold water fish. By this I mean trout and salmon. And that's the size of the products that we use uh, Chinook salmon fingerlings, rainbow trout fingerlings, which we've gotten away from to a large degree, and then our 11 and 15 inch catchable program. And there's Chinook salmon, which is kind of a size of a one year old Chinook salmon, and we do stock about 50,000 of those every fall in, uh, in Lake Oahe. And Lake Oahe is the only water that we manage for salmon right now and probably the only one with the potential to do so. Trout hatcheries are different for getting eggs. Uh, we get our trout eggs primarily right now from federal fish hatcheries and they're delivered overnight uh, as I eat eggs right to the door by FedEx. And then we do spawn Chinook salmon on Lake Oahe from adults returning to the rearing station there, transport the eggs back to the hatchery uh, rear them and bring them back over to stock. And uh, that's me when I was uh, quite a bit younger. Uh, our run last year was not so good. We relied on eggs from North Dakota and we've already, I'll just have a slide of what we've stocked already this year for Chinooks. We anticipate a little bit better run but our Chinook run is way dependent on our smell population and uh, we, we don't know just yet what we're looking at for improvements in that. 
this is a cold water request for 2014 uh, from some of the different species and where they come from. Gavin's Point Hatchery helps us out uh, every year with a few catchable rainbows that uh, the federal guys stock in some of our East River places where we manage urban fisheries with some trout. So far in 2014, like I said, we collected 147 million walleye eggs. They're incubating at Blue Dog Hatchery right now, and uh, we're very happy with that. Uh, that perch spawn has started off a little slow. As of uh, yesterday morning, we had two million perch eggs in the hatchery. We're looking for about 41 million, but that's very, very dependent on water temperatures and and uh, weather, and uh, we'll adjust as we go. And if we can't get as many perch eggs as we need, uh, we'll probably make an attempt to trap and transfer more perch. We do have a program where we manage some waters in South Dakota for muskie. Uh, primarily ones are the West 81, La or 81 Lakes, and Lynn Lake, and Amsden Lake. And we do sample, try to sample those populations every year. and. Uh, we did sample 128 muskies this year. Most of them were from West or from Lynn Lake, up uh, up north, east. And uh, just an example of sometimes the weather conditions we get to work in in the spring. And sometimes it's beautiful and the water's like glass. And sometimes it's like uh, last Tuesday. Most of the time. Yeah. Uh, Here's just an example of a photo of what we, of a net on Lake Oahe when we pulled it. You'll notice there's a lot of walleyes in there, but uh, there's a buffalo and a carp, and they had one net on, uh, on the southeast corner of the state that they pulled up, and it had over, they estimate, a thousand pounds of bullheads in it, and uh, that's, a, that's quite a, uh, job getting those out of there for the guys. So, so far, these are the numbers of fish we've stocked. Uh, we have stocked 500,000 walleye fry already that they had extra from Gavin's Point Hatchery. Uh, we were able to put them in Lake Campbell. And then uh, just some numbers there, trap and transfer numbers. One thing to note is, is the gizzard shad. Uh, we do use gizzard shad as a forage fish. Those fish were trapped out of Angostura down here and then transferred up to Orman and Shade Hill. They'll spawn and they'll help provide a good, uh, a good forage base up there and we've, we've had good success with that on those western reservoirs. Uh, that's an example of a Lake Oahe walleye. I uh, have to say that we may not see as many of them this year but uh, they're coming around, I think. We'll get some forage back. And then still to do, we need to collect more perch eggs uh, to try, try to meet our goals. We do coordinate and work really well with uh, some of our surrounding states, Iowa, North Dakota, Minnesota. This year we're going to try to trap and transfer and provide them with some perch. Uh, in turn, and every year, we get musky fingerlings from Iowa which we use in those lakes that we manage as musky, per, musty waters. And have to, soon the walleye hatch will be going, we'll stock our ponds with fry, and then those waters we manage with fry we'll be stocking, and that's a, you know, several million fry that'll get distributed. Uh, and those small fingerlings will be harvested out of ponds at Blue Dog Hatchery and stocked in June. A few of those will go back into the hatchery ponds and get harvested in August as larger fingerlings. And then finish our trap and transfer stockings from those requests. One thing I'd like to mention is, is that our stocking and spawning operation and all of our fisheries operation is a cooperative effort with the regions and our aquatic staff and, uh, and even other operation staff helps us out. and. Uh, we have a bunch of good staff, and it, it wouldn't go so smoothly as it does without them. So, any questions? I'd... 
just a beautiful sunset. Yes. John. Oh, certainly. Normally, we put a big effort on Lake Oahe to uh, uh, collect our walleye eggs. Well, our population of large fish in Lake Oahe is not what it has been. So we worked in the northeastern lakes of Lynn Lake, uh, Brush Lake, in the southeast, uh, Indian Springs, uh, Swan Lake. These lakes have incredible walleye populations right now. And, uh, and a real bonus is, is that they're close to Blue Dog Hatchery so we didn't have to fly any eggs, which was a, we probably saved $40,000 by not having to do that. So uh, uh, at, you know, those fisheries are something to get out and give a try. They're uh, really, really incredible right now. Thanks for the reminder, John. Okay, thank you.